First of all, um, I'm not sure how many people know who Malcolm Smith is or T.D. Jakes. I suspect more of you know about T.D. Jakes. Uh, I personally would have a lot of concerns about uh, someone who's um, affiliated with T.D. Jakes because uh, I have a lot of issues with the things he's done. He's one of these name it and claim it prosperity uh, preachers. And uh, we've, we've spoken a lot about why that's bad. Uh, but uh, if, if I'm not aware of Malcolm Smith, by the way, Malcolm Smith is one of the uh, Bible teachers that we have listed on the Church of the Eternally Secure uh, homepage. We, we list uh, 10 channels that we are, are recommending that you subscribe and, and listen to them. And Malcolm Smith is one of those. Malcolm is from England, but he lives in, I think, Texas now. Uh, and uh, he's one of my favorite Bible teachers. Uh, if you haven't listened to him, I hope you will do that. But here's the question. Um, should we exclude Malcolm Smith or anybody else in this in this kind of scenario because they uh, uh, have either their friends with somebody else that we don't like? Uh, it reminds me of probably about, I'd say about six or eight years ago now, there was somebody here that you all are probably familiar with. I don't need to mention the name, but... But um, I used to work closely with this person, but they, they got to the point where they were just routinely calling me and, and complaining about some person or another and why we need to uh, expose them or, uh, and shun them. Uh, and, and most of the time, uh, it, it, the reason that, that uh, they objected to the person to me was, was a minor problem that we should be able to tolerate that disagreement so that was the part of the problem is that i don't really think that the the disagreement rose to the level of uh, that we needed to react in that way however what really got me was uh this person contacted me one day and said that they went to this person's channel and and looked at their uh recommended channels their favorite channel list, just like we have our top 10 Bible teachers on our channel. Well, they, they looked at this person's channel and, and even though they didn't have any objection to their teaching, there was somebody on their recommended list that uh, when they went to their channel, and in fact, their channel was not a problem either. This second person in line was a good teacher. But that second person when they went to their channel, they saw that they liked somebody that was a heretic. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, idea that uh, um, it came up with probably 20 years ago called uh, Seven Degrees of Separation from Kevin Bacon. Anybody familiar with that? They, they, it, was the, it was a funny thing to do. It was uh, showing that anybody in the world was only seven steps away from Kevin Bacon, the actor. So in other words, I know Ben, Ben knows somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody, and within seven steps, you I can six, see- I think six degrees of separation. Six degrees of separation is uh, yeah, what I've heard. Um, did I say seven all along? Yeah, six degrees of separation. But and that to me, that that's a fun thing to do. There's no harm in that. But to but to extrapolate that we have to disassociate with someone that who's not only a good teacher, but they're recommending good teachers. But then the, one of the people they recommend is, rec is a friends with a heretic. You see how far people can take this kind of thing? They are nuts. And, and that's why I reached the point where I told this person and their wife that uh, they were uh, dogmatic and um, they, they, they were um, raising minor issues to the level of importance that were beyond what they should be. And, and, and they've just taken us too far. And ever since then, that person has been on a crusade to expose me because I would not join him in his uh, uh, efforts to expose others. I said, no, you're, what you're doing is wrong. I won't participate in it. So now I'm, I'm the enemy. He's been working against me for 
you know, eight or 10 years now. But that's, that's an example of this, really. I, I, Malcolm Smith, if you watch his videos, probably, uh, you, I think most of us here would love it. You might find something he says that you disagree with, just like I'm sure you, you can find something I say that you disagree with. Rene, Ben, none of us are going to agree with everything. I've yet to find any person who agrees with me 100% on everything, theologically. And I, I like this saying in business, they say in business, if two people always agree, one of them is unnecessary. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if we always agree on everything, then I'm not going to learn anything new. And I'm not, not going to ever be challenged because um, I know I'm not right on everything. I've been wrong on several uh, uh, theological questions uh, over the years. Um, and when, when people have pointed out to me and we talk, usually it takes a long time. If I've changed my mind on a, on a position, it, it normally takes me about a year of talking privately with a person, uh, debating privately back and forth. And then there's a saying that I like, uh, who but a stubborn fool would hold on to their error once they've been proven wrong? If I'm proven wrong, I'm not going to be stubborn and just keep my position. If I'm wrong, okay, I admit it here publicly. I was wrong. This is my position now. I've done that a number of times. Uh, so I I like it if, if someone tells me, hey, I disagree with you on this because there's a chance I'm still wrong on some things. Uh, in, in, in eschatology, uh, I'm really finally reaching the point where I'm feeling confident in, in a, my position now. But it's taken many years and countless hours of study and listening to all the different viewpoints before I finally am feeling like, okay, I really think I understand it now and I'm really confident. But uh, the only way that you're going to uh, advance in your, in your study and your learning in theology is you've got to be willing to listen to all points of view. And when I say listen, I mean you take your current position and you box it up and put it on the shelf. You go tabla rasa. That's a Plato term for a clean slate. You, you give your, your mind a complete washing and say, I'm not, I'm not going to take a position. I'm going to listen fairly without my old position interfering with my listening. And uh, when you do that, the outcome will be either you'll learn that you were wrong and hopefully you'll have the integrity to change your position or you won't ever agree that with them, but at least now you understand their position. And there's, that's always a good thing. Uh, so, Ben, what do you think of this? Well, I agree with, with what you said. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not super familiar with Malcolm Smith. In fact, there's not really any famous preachers that I, I really trust or find worthwhile listening to. Every once in a while, might be, might be one sermon. They, they may have a special, they may specialize in something, or uh, they may have. I'm not saying everything everyone says is bad, but in general. I don't, if, there's, if the a preacher is uh, our teacher on, on YouTube is well known, I uh, there's not many that I like. Um, I, one of the most popular ones I do like is actually Andy Woods, but even him I would disagree with. But beyond that, there's not a whole lot of people on YouTube that I really uh, really listen to. Malcolm Smith I wasn't familiar with at all. Um, TJ TD TD Jakes was recommended to me recently to uh, listen to. And within five minutes of listening to it, uh, he was talking about twerking for the Lord. And I, you know, I, you could say, yeah, it's tongue in cheek, and I'm not a legalist, and you know, don't be a legalist. But I just don't think that's appropriate, you know. And um, and I'm not saying that you can't listen to him. I'm just saying I wouldn't personally recommend him for most people, uh, just because of that reason. Um, you know, I, so you know, so I, I'm just really. I, I there's certain I, I I guess my standards are pretty high for uh, teachers that I that I listen to, um, and that's one one thing that when I when I did first get saved I asked God to one of my most fervent prayers was God send me good teachers, and um, he, he definitely did and uh, so and most of them again people ask me all the time like you know what do you think about this pastor or this pastor if it's a well known name more than likely uh, you know I I can't I don't recommend them just they're just something. They're either too watered down, or they're just not really saying anything, uh, the you know, particularly interesting, um, or there's just her they're heretics. You know, there's, there's a lot of heresy out there. Uh, very few teachers who um, will 
there's very few preachers that stand on faith alone through, you know, they give it lip service, faith alone in Christ alone. Uh, but they, they, they uh, betrayed themselves. They betrayed their real beliefs by saying, oh, well, are you a real Christian? And, you know, they're really, really accusing people like, oh, are you playing games? And, uh, you know, so I, I, yeah, I, I just really careful about who I listen to. And uh, both of those gentlemen, I am not super familiar with. But I, again, my standards are very high, and I think our standards should be high. I think we should stay, hold our teachers, uh, you know, to a high standard and help, hold them accountable. So I don't have a lot to say above and beyond what you said, Luke. Well, okay. I, uh, I like what you said, but I don't think you addressed the, uh, the issue about, okay, it's not even the issue with Malcolm Smith. The issue is that Malcolm Smith is a, a associated with somebody else that they don't like. I mean, how far are you going to take that in these, you know, how many steps is, are you going to go with that? Well, um, I, well, you are identified with the company you keep. Um, now, if it's false teaching, if, if, if you're associated with someone who's a false teacher, you know, in a, in a, a, t a false teaching that's significant, like, you know, it, it, it it's against one of our, our core doctrines, then I, de I definitely think there should be no association at all. Uh, you know, in First John, it says don't even, uh, you know, say um, Godspeed or what, I can't remember the thing. I can't remember the exact paraphrasing. It's in, it's in one of the John's epistles that you shouldn't even greet such a person uh, with God's speed uh, because you'll share in in their sin um, because you're basically in, in, in a you know you're in, you're implicitly endorsing them almost or at least can, it can be seen that way. Um, now, if it's a person who you know is a little bit more carnal, uh, you know, they're, 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 it's a maturity issue, not a doctrine issue. I, I'm I'm willing to be a little bit more um, lenient, I guess. But I think that we, again we should uh, not ex you know just not confront that kind of thing. But I think we, we should confront that kind of thing. So so I I, I yeah I mean I, I am pretty careful about who I, I associate with. But but again, you, Luke, you know and I you and I uh, Renee uh, we all disagree on different things. But they're not the core doctrines, and um, we respect each other's views. And we, you know, we, we give each other uh, a fair, uh, an equal platform or an equal voice. And so um, in that respect, I think I'm okay with that kind of thing. Okay. Well, uh, obviously, uh, the, the details do matter. Um, right. If, if Malcolm Smith was going to T.D. Jakes and say an amen to uh, any of his heretical teaching, then obviously we would have a problem with that. Uh, but what, let's suppose that Malcolm Smith is going there and uh, so that he can tell his audience the truth. I mean, that's, a, that's that we're supposed to do that. We're Absolutely. Not our, let's not put our light under the table. We need to take our light into the world and let, let it shine. So these things have to also be considered. Uh, and uh, the questioner, didn't really give us the details as to exactly. He says, uh, I saw Malcolm Smith on his channel go to a church that likes. This is actually the three degrees of separation, isn't it? I saw Malcolm Smith on his channel. So on Malcolm Smith on his own channel, he went to a church that likes T.D. Jenks. This is three Ds. This is three degrees of separation. Um, it was even worse than I thought that. It's exactly the point I was making is how far are you going to take this? Right. Yeah, yeah. I guess the main thing, you know, again, you know, if you're going to use a, anytime you can get a voice or a platform to, to correct false teaching, uh, I think we should take that opportunity. <laughs> but I don't think we should also, uh, you know, put on airs that we're, we're in fellowship with this person necessarily. I'm not super familiar with T.D. Jakes and his heretical doctrines. The only thing I've heard uh, uh, really brought against him was that he's a, a mortalist, I believe. Um, but uh, again, I, I'm not sure that's a, I, I don't think that's a fellowship issue per se. Um, or a, uh, yeah, I, I'm okay, uh, fellowshipping with modalists. I don't think it's true. I think it's absolutely wrong. Um, and it, it grieves me, but I, I'd be willing to, uh, fellowship with someone that way that, that believes in modalism. Mm -hmm. to, to me, the, um. The, uh, the the details as to what the error is of T.D. Jakes is, is not even the, the issue. It's the principle of, of uh, uh, you're, you're going to um, label someone like Malcolm Smith 
as a, you can't have anything with him or you're going to make a judgment against him, even though he, his teaching is not the issue. The, the, the church that he went to there, that's not even the issue, but they, that church likes T.D. Jakes. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, uh, I, I'm not even arguing against the, you know, what the details are of the errors. I'm just saying the principle of, of uh, making that kind of a, uh, a, a judgment in that way is, is really a big mistake, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think you should roundly condemn someone and, and campaign against them uh, for such a thing. I think the details very, very much do matter. And, uh, you know, so you really need to take it on a case by case basis.